What up, y'all? It's the show off DJ Static Select, and you watching Montreality. My story is I fell in love with hip hop very young, and I've been with the bitch since. I was the worst. Actually, I've been told by many students um, that went to schools that I've been to when they asked about me to teachers later that I was the worst student they've ever had in their life. I would sleep in class. I would um, skip class a lot. I don't even know how I graduated. I got a degree too. I don't even know how it went down. Because my schedule was, you know, go to radio, 8 a.m., intern, go to class, go to work. You know, at the time I was doing, you know, during the high school and college years, I was doing a lot of marketing and stuff. And I would go to the club, then I would go to the studio, then go DJ the club till like 3, 4 a.m. Then I have to be at the internship again at 8 a.m. So it was rough. Man, I did everything. I worked at a bike store. I started working when I was 12. I worked at a bike store. I worked at, um, I did dishes. I worked at McDonald's. Not a game. I worked at Friendly's. I worked at uh, this like postal center. I had to like box mad things and ship them out. But uh, by the time I was 17, I was living off DJing and doing parties and clubs. And consistency and quality is the key to success. You gotta, you know, do more than everybody else, but keep their quality, you know, better than, if not, you know, way better than everybody else. Because a lot of people put out a lot of music, but it's cookie cutter, you know. Man, I always wanted to be a pitcher, and I got, um, I got panniers disease when I was like 13. And I can't straighten my arm anymore, so that's kind of the reason I got into DJing so hard. I used to race BMX professionally, too. And, um, I was always in the computers, too, so I don't know. I can't say at this point, because I've been, you know, doing this for so long. I'm not the biggest bookhead, but I got, I read once in a while. It's gonna sound, you know, creepy, but the 48 Laws of Power. I like, uh, I like a lot of Robert Greene's books. You know, I got... The Art of Seduction, I got the 33 Laws to War, I got the 50 law, the 50th Law, I got this, The Art of War. Um, I read a lot of like hip-hop literature too. I got Jay-Z's book, Decoded, I got Common's book, I just read that, the, one day it all makes sense. I'm actually writing a book, and I think I'm gonna call it I'll Always Love Her, like the Common song. I actually got a tattoo on me, I used to love her, but um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna call it. It's gonna have something to do with her though. In a previous lifetime, I was uh, probably a scientist. I don't know. It's a hard question. Jay Z's top of my list, and uh, I'm actually working on that right now. Um, shout out to Young Guru. So that should happen someday soon, hopefully. Um, I want to work with Drake, man. I want to work with uh, Scarface. I think that's in the works too with Beanie Siegel. There's not too many I haven't worked with. I want to get more in the lab with Nas. We've done some stuff before, but I want to like really rock in. Um, Eminem, I want to do more stuff with. I'd like to do more stuff with Kanye. I've got you know to work with him, but I work with a lot of people that I wanted to. Basically, Obi Trice came through my radio show on Shade 45, and um, I, I was like, "Yo, we gotta do something." When we were on the air, you know, we had just met, and he's like, "Yo, let's do something tonight." And I was like, "All right," and I thought it was just small talk. And uh, after the show. I get out around midnight and uh, I go to this party that Premier was doing and all of a sudden I get a text like, yo, we're on the way to your studio. And I was like, all right, let's go. So we went to the studio. There was mad people there. Like I remember um, Freddie Gibbs was there, a couple girls were there, my man Push Montana was there. And Obi was just like going through beats and he heard the Richard beat and he's like, that's it. I got something for it right now. I was like, all right. And I remember there was mad people like talking and like, you know, drinking, partying and shit. And Obi laid down the first verse, which is still on the record. And uh, he left it at that. He's like, yo, just send it to me. I think I'm going to put Marshall on this. I was like, all right. Like, I didn't really think it was going to happen. Like, not no disrespect to Obi, but I was just like, yeah? Like, is that easy? Because, you know, he hadn't put a record out with M in years. And, like, a month later, he hit me like, yo, Marshall wants to make the, mix the record. He's not even saying M. He's saying Marshall the whole time. So I'm like, all right. So I sent him the session. And then I start hearing through the grapevine that, that M killed it. So then... I'm getting mad anxious because all these people are telling me they heard the record and they tell me about the hook and all that. And then um, eventually, when it was time for Obi's uh, listening session, I remember first the track list leaked and it said produced by Dr. Dre. And I hit Obi like, yo, what happened to the song I did? He goes, nah, that's Richard. Eventually there was a listening at the source and they invited me up and I heard the song and I was blown away. So shout out to him and Obi. 
we do this thing where we take pictures of people when they fall asleep, like you can't get caught sleeping, so there's a lot of legendary photos that uh, Term got in his computer. He got about 200 photos of like the most, you know, the most legendary MCs and DJs and producers just passed out on pit couches, planes. Man, I'm trying to think of what else. There's so many stories. Term breaking his arm on the store, idiot. Really, the, the love, man. Like, every day I wake up and I, sometimes I don't even feel like doing this and I, I'll go on like, you know, Twitter, e my email or something and I'll just see someone be like, yo, you changed my, my life or you changed my day with this song or, you know, you keep it. If, I remember like a couple of days ago, someone tweeted like, I had a bad dream that Static retired and like hip hop just got messed up and all that, like things like that is just like, you know, I can't let down the fans, at least not right now, you know? Montreal, you what up? What up, y'all? Static Selector, shout out Good Friday. We out here, show off tour 2012.